everyone, welcome back to Royalty Soaps and another episode in the Royal Creative Academy. Today we're going to be talking about prepping your area for soap making and prepping your raw materials. I feel like this part of soap making a lot of people either have a love or hate relationship with. Either you really like getting all your colorants and your fragrance soils and cleaning your area and getting everything pristine, or you're like, good grief, can I just get to the soap making? Now of course before before you watch this video, you want to watch the other two videos that we have, the lye preparation and all the things you need to buy before making soap. These two videos can't be skipped because you're going to be using some of the things in those videos in today's video. In our introduction, I also included a list of reading materials I wanted you guys to read before you begin. That's just going to give you some basic information about the soap making process, what's going on chemically. And and what you can expect from soap in general. So let's begin. The first thing that we're going to do, because we have all of our ingredients, we have all of our supplies, we've got our recipe, we're very excited, is to clean our area. You guys can see all this stuff behind me. That's right, I need to first put all of those things away. Anything that you have maybe on your kitchen countertop. I know a lot of you guys are in smaller spaces like apartments, so just generally take off your uh, salt and pepper shakers. Any Anything that might be uh, used for food prep, you want to put that in a very, very, very far away area. You don't want any of your soap making items to co-mingle with your food prep items. As you can see, I have some soap back here I need to put away. I've got my water bottle. We're putting those away. Two soap cutters gotta go. Bye bye, Natasha. All right, everything has been all cleaned up behind me. Next thing to do is make sure you have your recipe printed out. I have already printed out mine and cut it out. It has a little note section down here at the bottom so that you can write down anything you have observed or would like to remember next time. And of course the basic soap recipe we will be following in this series will be down in the description box of all of the videos. Now remember I provided you with an alternative recipe for those who would like to spend a little bit more money and get a slightly different soap result with some more bubbles. That recipe includes castor oil but today I will be prepping the recipe that only includes olive oil and coconut oil. Now it is time to wipe down our surfaces. I know I'm getting crumbs on my kitchen counter, so I'm sure you are too. I like to use Clorox disinfecting wipes, but you can use any disinfectant cleaner that you prefer. Just gonna give this a quick wipe down. Wipe down the table in front of me. Whee! And now it's time to prep our oils and colorants. Now, as you can see, soap calc provides you with ingredient measurements in both ounces and grams. And we're going to be using grams mainly because it is hyper, hyper specific. And I want to give you guys your very best shot at having accurate measurements. So we're going to use grams today. And here is how I generally get my oils ready for smaller batches like the ones we're doing today. I will take whichever oil is a hard hard oil, which means it is solid at room temperature. Today for us, we only have one, coconut oil. We have 209.7 grams of coconut oil, so we're going to round that up to 210 grams. And I'm going to measure that first into my white pitcher from the dollar store. The coconut oil I am using today is Luana coconut oil. You can find this at Walmart or Kroger if you're in the United States, but if you're in a different country, just get whatever coconut oil they have at the grocery store. The only type you want to make sure you're not getting is fractionated coconut oil. You do want to make sure that it is just coconut oil. And if you turn this around on the back, you can see ingredients, coconut oil. We don't want it to be cut with anything. So I'm going to turn on my scale. I'm going to place the container on it. And then we are going to hit the tear button. That means that now my scale won't be measuring the bucket weight. It will only be measuring what's going into the bucket. I'm also going to change the unit of measurement to grams. My coconut oil is liquid right now at room temperature because the melt point is 76 degrees and it is definitely hotter than that in my studio in Texas. But when you open yours up, depending on where you live, it might be solid. And that's perfectly fine. Just get a spoon and scoop it out. Now, as you can see, I was shooting for 210 grams, but it's at 211 grams. No big deal. You can just take your container, pour 
pour a teeny tiny bit out because a gram is a very small unit of measurement. And there you go, 210 grams. Excellent. Now let's move along to the olive oil. So I'm going to take this container off my scale and I'm going to measure the olive oil into a different container. As you get better at soap making and measuring, you won't have to do that and you can just pour everything into the same pitcher. But at first, it's kind of hard to tell how much of everything you need to add and maybe you pour a little fast and a little slow. If you add too much, you can't take it out. So just to be on the safe side, we'll use a different container. All right, I'm gonna do the same with this dollar store container. We're gonna place it on, tear it out so that now it equals zero. And we're going to pour in 839 grams of olive oil. And yes, I'm having to look at the scale upside down. So I'm feeling quite dangerous and skilled right now. Pour it a little much, so I'm just gonna take it real quick off the scale, pour a teeny bit back in. There we go, 839 grams. I'm going to move the scale out of the way because all of our oils have now been prepped, and I'm simply going to pour the olive oil into the coconut oil. Now, if you have a lot of hard oils with your recipe, if my coconut was solid or I had cocoa butter or shea butter, I would pop this in the microwave in 30 second burn until it became a clear liquid. Then I would take my liquid oils like olive oil or castor oil and I would pour it into the solid oils in the microwavable container and then they will all be see-through liquid oils together ready for soap making. Gonna use my spatula to scrapey scrapey out my container. Make sure we get all of that olive oil in. I'm gonna give this a quick little mix with my spatula to make sure all of the coconut oil and olive olive oil have blended together. And once again, if you're using the slightly upgraded version of the recipe, now would be the time for you to go ahead and measure out your castor oil and pour it in all the same. Now it's time to prep our colorants. Now, most colorants are used at a rate at one teaspoon per pound of oils. Now that's not a weight measurement, it's a volume measurement. And you can check on all of the individual distributors websites for this information. And I personally at Royal Royalty soaps convert those teaspoons to grams because if you would like to make a soap more than once and you want it to be exactly the same shade, you do have to measure it in weight instead of volume because your teaspoon may look different from my teaspoon. So for something like titanium dioxide, you're going to take your little teaspoon measure, scrape it off so it's nice and even, put it in a vessel of your choice, whether that is an empty baby food jar, um, a biodegradable corn cup, like what I have here, essentially just a little container. I knew someone who used to use old film canisters to mix their colorants in. Can you believe that? Then you're gonna take some really hot water and you're going to add an equal part of water to the titanium dioxide. So if you have a teaspoon of titanium dioxide, you're going to get a teaspoon of water, dump it in, and titanium dioxide dissolves pretty well if you get it from a reputable supplier. I almost never mix it with a mini mixer because it's really not necessary. You can see it's all completely dissolved and soaked up. Mixing up micas, however, is a bit of a different story. First of all, we're not going to mix these with water. We're gonna mix them with oil. And it does help to blend them in with either a popsicle stick or a mini mixer. Now, for our first soap we're going to make, we're going to use one colorant, Tequila Sunrise, and we are going to make the entire soap orange. So if you're only doing one color in soap making, it doesn't make sense to blend up your mica into a separate jar and then pour it in. You can simply add it straight into your oils because it's all gonna be one color anyway. Why waste a dish? If, however, you will be making a split batch like we will be doing with the second soap, it makes sense to blend them up individually. So I have my Tahitian teal that I'm gonna be dumping into this first container. And I have my always a bridesmaid that I will be dumping into this second container. And as you can see from Mad Micah's, their samples include one generous teaspoon. So I will be adding in double that amount from my oil mixture that I have sitting right here. So one, two, and one, and two. It's okay if you drip a little, don't worry about it. <laughs> so why do I put in double the amount of oil that I do mica? Well, 
The mica is really fluffy and you may even find with certain micas you have to add a little more oil than that just because it's so fluffy. One of these I'm going to mix in with a popsicle stick, but as previously stated, you can use a spoon. You could even use a coffee mixer. And we're just going to mix until we don't see any clumps in the mica. Perfect. For those of you who decided to upgrade and get a fancy mixer, the way I like to use them is to first wet all the mica because as soon as you turn this thing on, if you have lots and lots of colorant that hasn't been incorporated into the oil, it will puff, puff, puff everywhere. And then once I've done that, I just give it a good mix for two to three seconds. One, two, three. And that's it. These mixers do make life so much simpler. So to recap real quick, if you're going to be using water dispersible titanium dioxide, which is the type that I recommend and prefer, it is one part titanium dioxide to one part water. And if you're going to be mixing micas, you're going to use one part mica to two parts of your oil blend. Start there and if you need more, add a little more. One of the final things we have to do is mark our mold. As you can see, I have marked it on one side, but it needs to be marked on this side too. We're going to place a ruler on our mold and then we are gonna mark at every inch. Be sure you don't start your ruler at the very end of the mold because look, all this part isn't being used for soap making. So start where the soap is going to be poured right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna move my ruler down, nine and 10. I have found that over time, Sharpies don't stick that great. As you continue to wash and clean your molds, it will fade and you will have to remark. Now I know some people like to burn a spot in their silicone Silicone. Some people like to make a cut, but since we're just beginning here, making a mark with a Sharpie will do you just fine. Our oils are prepped. We have our mica nearby. You're gonna plug in your stick blender and attach the blender head. Be sure to plug that sucker in. We're gonna have our scrapey, scrapey spatula nearby. If you're going to be doing layers or multiple colors, you'll need your scale nearby, though for this soap that I am prepping, we're only doing one color, so I don't need it. Get your fragrance soil handy. Put on your gloves. Put on your hairnet if you are choosing to use one, as I highly suggest you should. Put on your goggles. Retrieve your lye water solution from its safe place. Remember, at this point, you should already have your goggles on. Make sure the mold that you already have marked is handy. And that's it, friends. We are prepped and ready for your first batch of soap. Now it's time for a little pep talk. So I've convinced you that you should make soap. We've bought our raw materials, we've done our research, we've prepped our area, our ingredients, our colorants, our mold. It's showtime. And normally, this is where people start to feel a little uncomfortable. It's your first time to work with lye and oils, and even though you're suited up, you're following safety precautions, it's still a little nerve wracking. So think back to the time when you first got in a car. Getting on the road is a little intimidating, but you have educated yourself and you should feel confident in that knowledge. And as you continue to drive, things will get easier, you will get better, and overall, it will be a great experience. I want you to say right now to yourself, whether it's in your head or audibly, you can say it out loud to yourself and the cat and the computer. So I want you to say out loud to yourself, Right now, I am capable, I am confident, and I am going to have fun. Guys, I was 16 when I learned how to make soap, and I promise you, your first batch of soap is going to turn out better than mine did. Mine was so ugly. It had horrible glycerin rivers. I didn't use a wonderful recipe. It smelled kind of wonky. And if you're following the instructions that I'm giving you and using the suppliers and the ingredients that I'm giving you, you guys, it's gonna be a beautiful first batch. Don't worry about it. And even if you mess up and things don't go exactly as planned, that's okay. It can 
be part of your learning process. You use it, you write your notes down on what you think could have gone wrong. You try again, you get back up, and eventually you're gonna be making soap like a pro. It's going to look fabulous, and you're gonna be part of a community of amazing artists and amazing people that are gonna build you up, and we're gonna help give you the tools you need to make art that can also clean your body. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, and if you would like to see more like it and continue the series for the Royal Creative Academy of Soap Making, subscribe to the channel. You can leave us a comment down below and give us a thumbs up if you have any questions. I have lots of people in the Royal Court who are also soap makers that will help you out as I will try to do. And so until next time, have an absolutely royal day and I'll see you right back here in a couple of days so we can make our first batch of cold processed soap. Bye guys. <laughs>